afternoon and welcome yeah. to Road Gateway Rotary and Happy New Year to everyone. All right, thank you. Okay, Kirk, if you'd like to come up and lead us in the pledge for all those who would like to join us. Please join me in the pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Patty has an inspiration for us today. Okay, my inspiration is unknown, I can attribute to, to I don't know what, but um, I found it on the internet and I thought it was appropriate today, given that Allison is doing her vocational. And it says, I wouldn't change the world for my grandchildren, for my grandchildren, but I wish I could, and I wouldn't change my grandchildren for the world, but I wish I could change the world for my grandchildren. Yes. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, looking around the room to see if we have any visiting Rotarians. I don't see any in the room. How about on Zoom lands? I think it's just us. Wonderful. How about any guests? Did I miss any guests today? I don't think so. All right. Well, welcome back, everyone. I hope you all had a lovely holiday and a happy new year. Um. Do we have any, oh, I do know we have at least one announcement. Mr. Greg Fishwick has an announcement for us today. It's, I know we're already at announcements. Super Bowl. <laughs> hey, Greg, could you come up here so we have the mic? Thank you. If you're, if you're new to Super Bowl pools, this is what one looks like. Um, we use our Super Bowl pool every year to get E-Ray. E-Ray for new members stands for every Rotarian every year. It is uh, an honor for a club to succeed at having every member donate at least $25 to the Rotary Foundation. Um, I'd say fewer than 10% of the clubs make this level yeah. of achievement. And we had a string that we broke a year or two ago during the pandemic of like eight years in a row, we had every member donating to the Rotary Foundation. This is one of the ways we do it. Um, so $25 per square, the winner of the pool will get a Paul Harris Fellow Award. So uh, Leonora is not here, but that's how Leonora Rogers won her uh, Paul Harris Fellow Award last year. We will have a watch party. Um, Patty Toronto is collecting prizes. They could be um, white elephant type prizes or other types of prizes, gift cards, et cetera. And um, if you come to the watch party, you get a chance to um, get door prizes from those prizes, choose from those. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, you can sign, there's a sign up sheet in the back. Uh, you put your name, the number of squares you want. Uh, if you're here today, you can put IOU under method of payment, or if you write a check, which is the prefer preferred method, write it to the Rotary Foundation. And in the memo line, put annual fund. That's the way to get counted toward every Rotarian every year. Um, if you have Rotary Direct or you sign up for Rotary Direct, uh, you'll get a free square um, if you've already bought at least one square. And if you buy four squares for $100, we will give you 100 matching Paul Harris Fellow Award recognition points, which helps you get closer to a Paul Harris Fellow Award. So real quickly, the way it works is these all are, will be the numbers. There'll be two teams eventually that are in the game. The game is currently scheduled for February 12th. Um, so we have about six weeks to uh, fill this up. If you're listening on Zoom, send me a text message or um, an email and just tell me how many uh, boxes, how many squares you wanna buy. And um, I'll either pick them at random or you can give me your favorite two digit number and I'll uh, 
make it line up and we'll get you a square. So I'll be trying to bring this every week uh, until the game and I'll be filling them in from home from the people that are on Zoom. So you can send me your, uh, your info that way. And uh, you can also pay by cash. There's a little plastic football in there and we can, you can throw your money in there and I'll uh, bring it back and we'll organize it so it goes to the Rotary Foundation. Thanks for the time. I'm glad there was only one announcement today. <laughs> so, also blue bags are back. I got, got the, we don't know yet. I think Patty, I think Patty was in charge of the watch party and I don't remember um, exactly what she had going, but she does, I think, have a place or two lined up. So thanks, Lutz. Thank you. Any other questions about the Super Bowl party? Um, if you are making a donation by check, um, if you just um, turn it in at the um, basket back there to Greg, he'll get it um, to get it to the right place. But Kirk um, is our foundation chair, and so he can collect those checks as well and make sure they get to the Rotary Foundation that way. I got one thing. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So for those on Zoom, if you didn't hear, if you're if you're in person and and uh, picking out a square, you can just put your initials on that square that you want to pick. All right. Any other announcements today? I don't see any hands on Zoom. Don't see. It's a quiet start back to the new year for us here. All right, but that's great because it gets us right to the part we love the best, and that is an opportunity to get to know our members better. And today we are going to hear from Allison Kavanagh, who is one of our newer members and granddaughter of member Patty Hansen. And so we're excited to get to know her better. Come on up, Allison. Lower that way down. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Allison Kavner, um, and I am Patty Hansen's granddaughter, like Gina Marie said. Um, I just had to show that picture because I thought it was so cute. Um, that's my son, Calvin, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but he was super afraid of that Santa Claus. And so I had to get in the picture. Um, <laughs> I just think it's so funny because I was not um, intending to take a picture with Santa that day. Uh, but go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, so my family, I thought I'd start off with giving an overview of who my family is. So on the left-hand side, you have my mom and my stepdad, Mark, um, at my college graduation. In the middle is my uh, two brothers. So I have a younger brother. His name is Devin. And Devin is uh, two years younger than me. He is living in Los Angeles right now. Um, and then I also have my brother, Travis, and he is four years older than me. Travis has autism. Um, and he was 10, so I would have been six. He got placed in a group home, um, good environment, stable. Um, and he's been in group homes ever since. And he uh, does really well there. On the right, we have my dad, Marty, um, and his girlfriend, Sherry, longtime girlfriend. Um, my husband, who I will also talk about in a little bit as well. Next slide. Um, I basically do this by where I live. So I grew up with my father who loves change. Um, by the time I was 18, I had lived in 19 different houses. So I moved a lot, um, typically staying in the same general areas, but there was a few times where I moved longer distance. And so my life is broken up by eras of where I lived. Uh, so starting off with the Bay Area, I was born November 18th, 1994 in Santa Clara, California. Um, I lived in the Bay Area until I was eight. I spent most of my time in the Los, uh, Los Gato, San Jose area. The three pictures of what I remember most, like I lived there for, you know, until I was eight. So there's some things I don't remember much. Um, one being downtown Los Gato. So I've got vivid memories of that. The second being Vistona Park. Uh, I loved playing on that airplane. I'm sure my grandma's like, yep, I remember that. Um, and so when I think of Las Gatos is typically what I think of besides my grandma's house. Um, and then the elementary school at the bottom is not an elementary and that's where I went to school um, for second grade. Next slide. There's some pictures. I had so much fun finding pictures. Um, so I have some baby pictures, some pictures with my brothers. Um, I love animals, which is something else I'll talk about as well. 
Um, so on the right hand side, that is my cat Anastasia. Um, and then below is my first puppy that I got. His name is Smidgen. Um, and my dad named him Smidgen because he was a smidgen of a dog because he was so small. Um, so those are some, some fun pictures. Next one. Uh, so I turned eight, my family moved to Auburn, California, um, smaller town directly in the middle between um, Sacramento and Tahoe. It is an old gold mining town. It's really historic. Um, I put some pretty awesome pictures. I think that Auburn's really cool and neat. It just has a really um, awesome historic background to it. So the top left picture is the courthouse, which is still the operating courthouse that was built in the early 1800s. Um, what's really awesome about it is it's massive. I don't think you can tell from the picture, but it's so big that you could see it from anywhere in town. No matter where you are, um, you can see it. So it's pretty awesome. Um, bottom left is basically the mascot of Auburn. If anyone has been to Auburn or driven through Auburn, you're probably going to see the gold miner. It's a massive statue. Um, he's a dentist who makes those statues. Um, he also has, I didn't put them on here, uh, but he also has made a lot of nude statues around town and they're massive. Um, at one time when I was, I want to say I was like in third or fourth grade, my dad and I made clothes. We wouldn't put clothes on them in the middle of the night. Um, <laughs> I tried, I knew it was in the news. I couldn't find the pictures, but I didn't put those on there. Uh, but some awesome pictures. The Forest Hill Bridge is the, the fourth largest bridge in um, the United States and second largest in California. Um, so that's Auburn. Oh, in the high school. I didn't show the high school. I went to Placer High School for six months, but um, before I moved to, to Oregon. Um, but the high school is really cool. The high school was actually originally a college from the 1800s and it was separated. So like, the passing periods are 15 to 20 minutes long because to get from one side of the high school to the other side of the high school, it took that long of time. Um, it was it was really neat. Just really old historic buildings there. And here's some pictures from that time frame. Um, there's us inside the gold panner. My mom made us all every single time we had a family reunion or family friends came to town. She made us take pictures inside the gold panner, which drove me insane at the time. But looking back, it's kind of cool to have those pictures. Uh, when I was 11, um, my dad's side, um, my grandma and my aunt took my cousin and I on a big European trip. It was a two week trip. Uh, so in those pictures, I am at Buckingham Palace on the bottom, and then above we were in Venice. Um, we went and saw the Louvre, and I remember the most exciting thing about we also went to the Eiffel Tower. The most exciting thing about the Eiffel Tower at that time was the carousel across the street. So there's pictures of us on the carousel, like next to the Eiffel Tower. Um, but it was a really good time. Uh, Disneyland, you'll see a lot of Disneyland pictures. I'll talk a little bit more about Disneyland later because I love it so much. Um, so I got a couple of those. My bottom left is my very first high school dance. Um, and it's with one of my really good friends. Her name is Sarah. She was the maid of honor in my wedding. Um, it's just so funny to look back at those silly dresses and our heels and our hair that looks awful. But um, yeah, next slide. Uh, when I was 15, my dad lost his job. My dad works, um, has always worked in either car or banking or something along those lines. And um, when I was 15, my dad lost his job. Uh, he was working for a larger dealership in Sacramento. Um, and he took that as an opportunity to move us again, because that's what he loved to do. Um, my dad grew up actually in Grants Pass. Um, and he got his job in Oregon in Roseburg. So he got a job with Southern Oregon Federal Credit Union, which now is First Community because they merged. Um, and he was a branch manager for a couple of different branches, but he was based out of Roseburg. So first we moved to Roseburg. Um, I was 15. I was a freshman in high school. I was a little awkward. Um, and I went to Roseburg High School first, which is huge. I mean, you guys probably have seen it from the freeway. It's a massive school. And coming from a massive school, I thought I'd do okay, but I didn't know anybody. So I was really struggling. Um, and luckily I knew somebody from Auburn who lived in Roseburg and he went to Glide. So I thought, I thought why not? Let's see what this is all about about 15 minutes east of Roseburg. Um, I came from a school of a couple thousand people and I ended up at Glide with 245 kids for all four grades. Uh, so it was a culture shock. I remember showing up my first day and everyone knew who I was before I even got there. I'm like, oh, this is weird. Um, so it was, it was a big change. Um, it was awesome though. I was there for six months with just the second half of my freshman year, but I really did enjoy Glide, just the small culture, the atmosphere there. Um, it was awesome. And then in 2010, we moved again because my dad got a job at the corporate office here when it was soft Q. Um, he was the VP of lending. Um, and so we moved here and he was so excited because this is where he wanted to be because he grew up in Grants Pass. So the first opportunity that he got to get us here, we came. 
Uh, that was our first house. I loved that house. Um, that was our first house in Grants Pass. So I wanted to put that picture up. Um, he wanted us to go to Hidden Valley High School. Next slide. Because that's where he went. So that was a huge, um, a huge deal to him. So he wanted to find a house that was in the Hidden Valley School District. So that house was over off of New Hope Road. Uh, I went to Hidden Valley for my sophomore through senior year. Um, I got really involved in FBLA, so the Future Business Leaders of America. That was my jam. Uh, I tried sports. I did cheerleading a little bit. I did soccer a little bit. Uh, but FBLA was really my thing. So I competed um, you know, at the state level, the regional level, the state level, and then I competed nationally twice. Um, I placed in state my... Um, I guess my junior and my senior year, I got to go to national. So through FBLA, I got to go to Anaheim. I got to go to Disneyland, but I also got to go to San Antonio, Texas and compete. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, I got to meet kids from all over the United States and we all had shared interests. Um, and through FBLA, it really shaped who I am today. Um, I, with all my moving, my grades were not very good, uh, especially for my freshman year. I would say that I was a solid C student and then I moved again. And um, so my freshman year was really bad, but I re kind of built that up. Um, at that point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to college. I wasn't sure if that was going to be for me. But when I got into FBLA, I started really getting into the business aspect of it. I realized, no, that's what I want to do. I want to do something business related. Um, and so oh, that's my senior picture. I thought that was cute. Um, I decided to go to SOU. Um, my original plan, which is kind of a funny story, I really wanted to go to Pacific University, which you have to have like super good grades for that. Uh, and I went and met with the College Dreams advisor at the time, uh, who's Jen Perry, if anyone knows who Jen Perry is. Um, and I sat down with Jen and she said, well, where are you going to go? And I said, Pacific. She's like, oh, honey, no, you're not. She's like, but we have, <laughs> so I have a really good plan for you instead. And she showed me SOU. And she showed me, you know, my options. And so I chose SOU. I liked the idea of being close to home. Um, my parents had gotten divorced my junior year of high school. And my mom was local. My dad had moved away. I wanted to stay close to my mom. I uh, had the opportunity to still come back home if I wanted to. Um, the business school is great. So SOU is a good fit. Um, in the pictures, oh, I did transfer to ASU for a second. I left. I wanted to go to Arizona State. I wanted to change. I got there. My financial aid was not the same. So I came back. My dad lives in Arizona. So I wanted to give that a chance. So um, but SOU was perfect. Uh, pictures, the bottom one with my grandma, my mom, and our doggies. Um, so the doggie that I'm holding in the picture, his name is Petrie. He's my heart dog. Um, when I was a soft, no, I've been, yeah, sophomore, sophomore college. Um, I had a falling out with some friends. And so I had moved into a different house. So I didn't know my roommates very well. And uh, I was like, I'm going to get a dog, which no sophomore in college should be getting a dog looking back. But I decided to get a dog and I went to the local animal shelter and I picked out a dog. She was so cute. She was a little chihuahua. Um, but it was the end of the day. So they said, come back tomorrow morning. We'll fill out the adoption papers. We just don't have time. So I went back the next day and she was gone. So someone had already adopted her. So I went to the next animal shelter and I'm, I walk in and I tell them I'm buying, or I'm not buying, I'm adopting a dog today. And they said, well, we're going to take someone to walk through the kennels with you. If you're that serious, I'm like, oh, I'm that serious. So I sat down in the waiting room. They're going to bring someone to go with me. And they sit me in a chair next to that little scruffy dog. And he was all kind of cowered in a corner and I got him to come over to me and they'll, do you want to hold him? Of course I want to hold him. So I'm holding him and he's being all sweet. And they're all, well, he's eight years old. He's never had a home before. They're all, he's kind of been passed around from shelter to shelter. I'm like, well, I'm taking him then. Didn't look at any of the other dogs. I don't even know if there was another dog out there, but um, he was awful. He was really, really bad for a really long time. <laughs> um, he was not house trained. He, um, he had no manners whatsoever. Um, and it took like probably a solid year for him to actually realize like my life's good people love me I'm safe and then all of a sudden it was like a light bulb came on in his head and he's like this is good he was the most amazing dog ever um so he really helped me get through college because I had so much ups and downs through college and so he was um, my rock through that during college I met my husband um I worked to support myself through college and so I worked at Pita Pit and my husband was a manager at Pita Pit when I got hired, my the owner said my only rule was that I wasn't allowed to start dating any of my coworkers, and I did it. Um, and so I started dating my boss, um, and we hit it off, and we've been together ever since. Um, and then my college roommate's up there too. Her name is Kendall. Um, she went into nursing, and she's actually a pediatric nurse at Asante. So post college, 2017 was a crazy year for me. Um, I graduated from college. Uh, my husband and I got married September of 2017. We bought our first house in August of 2017. 
Uh, so it's all back to back. Uh, we lived in Medford uh, for a while, and that's just where we were settled. Um, and then I kept getting jobs in Grants Pass, and I kept getting drawn back here. And so finally, once we felt like we were ready, we did buy a house in Grants Pass, and we moved here in 2020. And then there's Calvin. Um, so we had Calvin um, in 2019, July 13th, 2019. <laughs> anyway, he was a day old. Uh, so here's some pictures of Calvin. Calvin, we're all maybe a little obsessed with Calvin. I think everyone in my family is a little obsessed with Calvin, um, but he's fantastic. So he is three now. He's very, very three. Um, he's very opinionated. Yeah, he likes things his way. Um, but he's the center of attention. So that's just how it is. Um, but just some fun pictures. He's, he's a lot of fun. Um, the one up top right is very recent. So that one was taken in December. Um, I got some pictures from his very first Halloween when he was a, um, Target employee. Um, <laughs> he's just so much fun. All right, next slide. And then my fur babies. So I love animals and I love special case animals. So special needs. Um, so I told the story about Petrie, how he never had a home before. Unfortunately, Petrie died. Um, I had him for about three and a half years. He got diagnosed with cancer um, after I had him for about a year and a half. And they told me he only had six months to live and he lived two and a half years. So longer than that. So he was fantastic. Um, but I also have Baxter. So Baxter could be on the left-hand side. Baxter has three legs. Um, I, I tricked my husband to getting him a little bit. The Humane Society, I knew he was there. The Humane Society was having a garage sale. I told my husband, let's go to the garage sale. We didn't even look and I left with him instead. Um, so my poor husband. Um, how can I not get him? He looks just like Petrie, but he's got three legs. So um, he's getting older now. I got him when he was three. He's closer to 10. He's a little arthritic, but um, he's great. And then I also have Ash and Ash, upper right-hand corner. That's when she was a puppy. She's a lot better than that now. Um, but she was in a house fire when she was a puppy. So she came from Central Point. There was a garage that caught on fire and they had a litter of 10 puppies and eight adult dogs and they all got burned. Um, one puppy didn't make it, but all the rest of them survived. Um, so they all are covered in burn scars and she looks super tough, but she's actually a big baby. Um, she's got a big scar on her head, down her back. Um, I have two cats. So I have Opie, Kitty, and she's in the middle giving me lovin's. She's the best cat in the world. Like I've never met a cat like this. She's perfect. Her brother, on the other hand, Ronaldo, the white fluffy one that's beautiful, is awful. He's the worst cat I've ever had in my life. So I've got the best cat and the worst cat. Um, he doesn't listen to anything. And he's just, he ruins everything. He destroys, he chews up. He's chewed up an entire book before. Like he's a monster. Um, and then I have my rabbit. That's, um, I call him a bun bun or um, his name's actually Olaf. But I love him so much that I got him tattooed on my arm because I'm a little obsessed with him. Um, he's basically like a cat. He's got a litter box. He's got a cage inside, but he's got free row in the evenings after Calvin goes to bed. Um, and so he's basically a cat, but he doesn't bark and he doesn't scratch things. He's amazing. Uh, next slide. Uh, so my hobbies, passions, and interests. So I love Disney. I love all things Disney. So I go to Disneyland quite a bit. And this last year I went two times, um, which was, an, it's an expensive interest, um, but I just love all things Disney. I love the movies. I love, I love all of it. I think it's that magical feeling. So I'm really into that magic feel good. So I love Christmas time and um, I just love Disney. I love animals, like you probably have heard. Um, uh, that's a picture of me with Peppa Pig. So I used to serve on the board out of Sanctuary One. Um, I like to do, I like to work with youth or serving people. But in my volunteer roles, I like to work with animals. So um, that was Peppa Pig at Sanctuary One. And then I love to read. My favorite book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Next slide. So my career. Um, so in 2017, which was my crazy year, which was the year I graduated from college, I called Chris Pendleton. I don't know if anyone knows Chris Pendleton. Um, I owe everything to Chris Pendleton. Um, that's a picture um, in that my wedding we're hugging. Um, but he, I called him and I said, I graduated. I was having a hard time finding a job as every recent graduate does. So I called him, I said, can I just volunteer? Cause he runs the Josephine County Foundation. He's the executive director. Um, and so I was like, can I volunteer my time? Can I help with FBLA? And he's like, mm, how about I give you a job instead? So I didn't even interview. I didn't do anything. I got the job. Um, and so I worked there for about a year. Um, and that's where I fell in love with nonprofit. I didn't think that I was gonna work at a nonprofit role, but I loved it. Um, I loved the idea of serving the community and bettering people's lives. So while I was there, 
I managed a bunch of children, which was the hardest part of the role. Um, they were my volunteers and my employees, and they were high school kids, and that, so that was a little tough. Um, but I did community service projects. I helped with fundraising. I did grant writing. Um, so that's what really kicked started my career. A year after that, I started working for the Josephine County Parks Department. I quickly realized I did not love government, but I stuck around for a couple of years. Um, I did a lot of our accounting, which is funny because I failed accounting class a couple of times at college, but I don't think my boss knew that. Um, so I, I did the accounting, I did the accounts payable, I did the accounts receivable. I also did some projects management. Um, I kickstarted the project at Tom Pierce Park with that new playground. I don't know if anyone has seen the new playground being built, but it's it's amazing. Uh, I drove past it the other day because I had to go see. Um, but I kickstarted that, so I helped with the designing and I had helped with the fundraising there. Um, after Calvin was a little bit older, I felt like I was ready to leave and go to a new job. And so in 2020, I started working for Project Youth Plus. Um, I was a college and career advisor. So I was a case manager for about 200 kids between Hidden Valley and Lincoln Savage. So I was stationed out at Hidden Valley, but I also worked out at the middle school once a week. Um, I loved it. Uh, Project Youth Plus is a fantastic organization. Um, but after a couple of years, I realized that maybe working with students is not my, um, my dream job. Um, they're tough. We're a little tough. Um, so I decided that I wanted to, to look into doing more grant writing and fundraising. Um, while at Project T Plus, I worked with Nicole Selinger a lot on grant writing. I assisted her on a lot of um, applications or do some of my own. Um, and so that's when I realized that's, that's what I wanted to do was doing the grant writing and fundraising aspect. Uh, so then I left in July and now I'm the director of financial development at the Y. Um, and I love it. I love this job. So I do all of our grant writing. I do all of our fundraising because we do an annual campaign every year, which raises funds for our scholarship program. Uh, then I do all of our marketing as well. <clears throat> and if a catch-all position, it seems like I do a lot of other things too. Um, but it's it's fantastic. I love grant writing. So since I've been there, I've been there since July. Um, I've been pumping out grants. So they've never really applied for grants. A little bit here and there, but it's never been consistent. Um, and since I've been there, I brought in like a little over $200,000 in grants. And then um, I fundraised another like $60,000 and just fundraising funds. And so um, I found my passion. I found my niche. Um, so I'm super happy to be there. The community service. Um, grants past Kiwanis. I joined in 2020. I double check. Um, I'm a very partial to the Kiwanis. I love the Kiwanis because when I was in high school, it was my junior year, and I was actually presenting about the Josephine County Foundation because my, my class in high school founded the foundation. Um, and so I was presenting about that, um, but it was my very first public speaking ever. I was so scared. I mean, it, it's only a 15 people club, but I was so scared. I remember them being so kind to me and they're so sweet. So I'm very partial to that club. So I joined in 2020 and I've been there since. Um, I joined you guys in 2022. Uh, like I said, I like to help animals as my volunteer roles. And so I started out at Sanctuary One um, in 2021. And I was there for about a year and a half. Um, and then I also served on the Young Professionals Board for about two years between 2020 and 2022. Um, I decided to leave both those boards because I wanted to focus more on Josephine County. So I started conversations with some other organizations here locally. Um, it was just too hard to do the travel to Jackson County and back. And I wanted to serve you know, organizations here. And that is it. Wow. Thank you, guys. <laughs> questions? Yes. Yes, Luke. <laughs> the question was, um, does Calvin get wanting his way from his great grandmother? Um, and I would say yes. I think that, that I think we're all we all all of us have that same personality trait. So I think it's been passed out passed down from generation to generation to generation. Um, so yes, <laughs> yes. Yep. You're at my graduation. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you guys. That was fun. I love talking about myself. So thank you.
in the Kiwanis Club because we are actually thinking about doing a joint project with the Kiwanis Club. So we'll have to connect. All right, Lutz, I think you're up for Sergeant at Arms. Right. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, we managed to survive 2022. Let's try to live 2023, okay? Push it. So there are some rumors from uh, the North Pole that some of you got substantial amounts of money in your Christmas stockings. And I'm expecting some people to lay a little of it out today for happy bucks, okay? So who's happy out there? Don't be hiding, those of you in Zoom land, Santa knows where you are too. Yes, Bella. Well, I'm going to get back on to Alex and let's let's look here. I'm also sort of urban by the way, but I will be a million times in that our health lab. So it's just like so I think it's like sometimes when you read and you always communicate and have a way to go, you have to really focus still and have the people out there. So you guys need to see. Well, I didn't put it in the cash. <laughs> I know I saw it. But I guess the most amazing gift um, in our travels this last year, we discovered um, the farm results. Um, there were just big uh, things that people put on the front of the barn um, when they made the break up. So all the way to kind of wind them. And, uh, but they live in Providence in the South, and then uh, we got to Southport, Oregon, and Sixth Oregon, and I made Bob stop at every one we stop. I just take a picture of it. I don't know my fortune, but I And so for Christmas, me and my granddaughter made them. Oh, and you know, granddaughter got the colors and they together and she did it and uh, Doug Walker kept the board that he had it had in birth for a day and um so now I'm going to buy it on the garage and um of course when I opened the package I didn't know what it was I saw the back of the of the board and I went do I know this to be I said, well, you know, it's really good. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe it's just the appropriate. You know what? I'll leave them. An eight year old. Did anybody stop moving three times before you left the car? Well, they're going to go I also have a happy birthday, Allison. Um, good to have a good Christmas rabbit. It's been 20 more, 50 years. Good to have a good Christmas rabbit. 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 Good to Come on, Santa's watching. Yeah. yeah, Kelly, I heard you got a big chunk. Quiet last for Allison. I'm glad it's recording. Did she talk fast? <laughs> <laughs> But also, it was very impressive, and um, I'm glad you're part of the club. It's excellent. And, uh, 
FBLA for those that might not know is future business. Yeah, good. I got this. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know that I want to take that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get 20 bucks. I'm going to get a thousand bucks or a hundred thousand bucks. But then after I got it, that's what I was doing. Well, you got something okay. I was afraid you were one of those people who just put your name up there so that you got uh, credit for being here, but uh, you weren't really. Fire away, Kelly. Hey, can you hear me? Lutz, can you hear me? No, very, very light. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can turn up the sound a little bit. How's that? It's a little bit better. That better? Okay. Well, I have $10 in happy bucks because Ludi stepped up to be sergeant at arms today. And this is a shout out to everybody out there that we need you to um, commit to being sergeant at arms once in a while because it's really very fun to do it as both Luke's and I can and attest to, James has done it. We've had several people have done it that have done it, but let's get some new faces up there doing it as well. Um, Gina Marie puts it in the, the uh, um, weekly, uh, help me, you know, in the weekly uh, uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, so there's a sign up for it. So do the sign up. Okay, thanks, Kelly. Uh-huh. In the room. Okay, 10 happy because of Allison, who's pretty amazing. And then as you can see, we've all put in a lot of money because she is a woman. <laughs> Anybody else on mine? Last call. Okay. Okay. Grab my sheet over here. Okay. So next week's program. We have Sadie Emmons coming to tell us about the Growing Together Family Center, which I had not heard about before, but sounds very interesting. So it should be a great program. Um, and the final thought for the day today. Today is National Bird Day. I love finding out which national day it is. You can go online and there's always like three or four national days of something. But today is National Bird Day. And so the quote I found for you is that a bird sitting on a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because its trust is not on the branch, but on its own wings. So always believe in yourself. All right. Have a wonderful afternoon and we will see you next week.